so in our last lesson we had already created this sketch that you can see on your screen right now the size is 69 by 40 so what you can do whenever you are done with the sketching as the sketch is completely defined and constrained I will just click on this finish the sketch icon so you can either click on over here on this green tick or also you can click on over here to finish your sketch so finishing your sketch means just finishing your sketch coming out of this particular work environment this sketch work environment so I will just click on finish sketch and here you can see I am back to my solid modeling work environment so now here you can see this is the sketch just we had created this is sketch one uh, it's sketch 1 or sketch 2 whatever the name you don't have to worry about the names over here so here you can see this is the sketch that we had just created now I what I will do I will just click on this home icon over here to go on to the isometric view and now we, we are into isometric view now before we'll move forward what I will do I will just turn off this origin over here turn off this origin folder so the drawing my sketch will be more clear I will be able to see it more clearly and now we are into isometric view so here you can see that here are all my solid modeling tools so we are going to use very few of the tools into this particular lesson because uh, to create a bracket we are not going to use so many of the tools just few of them will be enough for us so here to create a solid base uh, first so as as per our design uh, approach that we had planned we first thing we had to create is a solid base so to create that what we'll do I will just activate this extrude tool that you can see over here inside the create panel so I will activate that and I it's automatically selecting the profile and the reason is because there is just one single profile into my uh, this complete uh, design this in this bracket design so if it is not by default selected uh, if it's if it is unselected so whenever you will activate this tool a new window will pop up like this here you can see where you will be seeing different option so the first thing that you have to do is just activate this profile section and then select your profile that you want to convert to 3d and when I say profile means I mean to say the closed space or the closed area of your sketch so that is considered to be as a profile so here you can see this was my closed profile so I had just selected anywhere in, inside my profile so you just have to click anywhere inside your profile so if I will click on over here 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 or here so it will automatically get selected here you can see so as you can see that this arrow is pointing towards upward uh, so this means that whatever the distance I will provide it will start extruding that so in our case since it's uh, we are going to 3d print this bracket using normal desktop FDM machines so I'm going to take a thickness of 2.4 millimeter so I will just write 2.4 millimeter over here and 2.4 millimeter is uh, is enough for having a good thickness thick material so I will I just taken 2.4 also you can take it 3 millimeters or whatever millimeters but don't try to make it over thick because uh, just by making it over thick is not going to add any extra value to it it will just uh, add some material onto your uh, project or to your model only just extra material that is a waste so 2.4 millimeter I think is enough and then as you can see it's also giving me a preview of the base and since I am satisfied with the result so I will just press ok and here you can see the first base for solid model inside Autodesk Fusion 360 we had just created so congratulations to everyone to creating your first solid 3d model inside Autodesk Fusion 360 now the next thing is creating the walls for your bracket so if you will go just go on to and check your PDF file you will be able to estimate like if you will be able to get an idea like how your bracket will look like so to create the walls for your bracket uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this top face as a sketch face and I'm going to create a new sketch onto it so what I will do I will just activate my create a sketch tool then I will select this top face of this body as a sketch plane instead of selecting this default plane I'm going to select this top face as a sketch plane so I will just click on this top plane here you can see now that particular plane is ready to create a sketch now here I'm going to create a sketch so for that I'm going to use line tool as, as you can see my all my sketch tools are active over here and also a new sketch just got created onto the top of this particular body here you can see this is new sketch that is sketch 3 so I will activate my line tool from over here also I can go on to create panel and activate my line tool and I will create a line like this from this endpoint 
to up to this point then i will go something like this and then up to this point like this and whenever i am seeing this perpendicular icon then only i am leaving my cursor it's because i want to minimize my constraints here you can see so this is the first line that we had created inside fusion 360 yeah, inside sketch 2 now what i'm going to do is i want this line to be touching to this edge so for that what i'm going to do is i will just activate my coincident tool will select this point and this line so it will just touch so here you can see the moment i had applied the constraint so it is now just touching to uh, that particular edge and again i will activate my sketch dimension tool then i want dimension from this line to the origin so i will select the origin first then will then the dimension line and will drag outside and will provide the dimension 24 and we'll do the same on the other side we'll select the origin we'll select the line and we'll drag outside like this and we'll provide the dimension 24 so here you can see it's symmetric on both the direction now i will activate my offset tool from over here and then we'll select my this profile that we had created using the line and now you can see it is offsetting towards outside direction so i will just drag it towards inside and i had just had to provide the distance of minus 2.4 here you can see minus of 2.4 and why i am taking 2.4 is because if you are going to use a desktop fdm machine and if your nozzle size is 0.4 millimeter so if you want to 3d print any object or any any project or anything if you want to 3d print it then you have to consider at least four wall thicknesses that so only that you will be able to get enough strong part otherwise it will not be enough strong so here you can see my since my uh, printer is having a nozzle size of 0.4 so i can take 1.6 as well that will be enough enough strong for me but here i am taking it 2.4 just to take some extra factor of safety so so this is almost six layers of wall thickness as you can see so i will just write and press ok and here you can see i just created a new sketch that it offset from this part this this profiles like this now i can just click on the finish sketch then again i will click on this home view here it is now as you can see we have just finished the sketch and we are again back to our solid modeling work environment but at this moment i want to edit my sketch that we had just created this this sketch this sketch too so how we can do that i want to add more features to it so how we can do that so that is why the timeline is always important i told you so just go back to your timeline identify the sketch that you want to edit so this is the sketch 3 that i want to edit so if i'll go on and check this is the sketch 3 i will make a right click and click on the edit sketch option over here to edit my sketch so here you can see the moment i had clicked i am again back to my sketch work environment so here i'm going to add few more lines from this end to this end like this and then i will offset these lines like this by 2.4 millimeter and will press enter and also I want to define this line from this edge to this I just want to keep 19 so I will give dimensions like this we'll do the same on the other side so again I will create line like this and then I will activate my offset tool from over here onto the modify panel and then we'll select the line we'll offset it by 2.4 again and we'll press ok now I will activate my dimension tool onto this create panel here you can see then we'll select this line and this is and we'll define 19 again similar to the other side that we had created so both sides it's symmetrical now i am finished with the sketching part i can just click on the finish sketch and here you can see this is what we got so here you can see the moment i had finished the sketch we are back to our solid modeling tool so here you can see now if i i will again activate my extrude tool from over here onto the create panel and i will just select this profile and by default this time as you can see there is no profile selected because we got two sketches i told you in the uh, when we are extruding the first sketch now i will just select this profile to that i want to extrude and will drag this arrow like this and then i will input my dimensions that i want to extrude in this case i just want to give 43.6 millimeter here you can see and it's giving me a preview and operation here you have to make sure that it's joined because we want this the new extruded part and the base to be joined together as a single body that's why we have to make sure that the operation here is joined 
also for all these dimensions that i am considering at this moment i told you to refer to the pdf that i had attached with this course on that pdf you will be able to find all these dimensions that i am considering in this project so i will just press ok to accept the results so here you can see this is what we had created so far somewhat a kind of uh, bracket shape but it is not but this is not something that we are like our finished product so we are going to modify it more and since we are designing it for 3d printing so we'll try to avoid any kind of overhangs and when i say overhangs means that that any feature that is not being supported from the base are considered to be overhang so we are avoiding all kind of overhangs also we are considering all the features and uh, features i mean the thicknesses of the wall or or the other stuff to be uh, optimized for 3d printing for example in our case we had considered the thickness to be 2.4 millimeter that is the six times our wall thickness that is uh, and our wall thickness is 0.4 in this case so it's 2.4 right now the wall thickness and same for the base just to make a stronger bracket part so also if you got any questions you can also comment in the lessons uh, in the course q and a section you can ask to me you can also contact me if you got any trouble if you had if you are having any kind of problem in finishing up this project inside autodesk fusion 360 so as you can see this is the part that we had just finished up to this point and now to give it a bracket shape we are going to use a tool inside modify panel and it's called the chamfer tool here you can see so we are going to activate this chamfer tool from over here on onto this modify panel so i will just go onto the modify panel and will activate this chamfer tool and here you can see so to apply the chamfer i had to select the corners onto which i want to apply the chamfer so these are the two corners where i want to apply chamfer and then i will drag my arrow like this to get a chamfer shape like this and in this case i am going to use not equal distance chamfer i want uh, to use two distance chamfer so here you can see in this direction i want to specify the distance of 37.4 here it is or maybe 37.6 yes and on this direction just so just select your arrow and then specify your dimensions for example let's say 40 or maybe 43.6 here you can see 43.6 and it's completely touching to the edge so uh, here you can see we had we can also input those dimensions from over here onto this windows but it's always better to get a better idea like which dimension you are changing by selecting these arrows also you can change the dimension because wherever you are selecting these arrows or uh, this window is getting updated with its information so here you can see i had just applied a two distance chamfer uh, on both the edges uh, one is 37.6 other is 43.6 millimeter and since i am happy with the results i will just press ok so now it is looking like something as similar to our bracket that we had uh, discussed earlier in our lessons so here you can see this is the bracket we had just created and now the moment you will just press ok with the extrude here you can see by default the sketches are turned off so i just want my sketch through three to be turned on again onto my surface so i can just turn it on from over here here you can see it's again turned it on now we are going to you extrude these features as well this uh, this extra support on the walls and that we're going to extrude now so for that uh, particular feature to extrude we'll again activate our extrude tool onto the create panel then we'll select this profile and this profile and here you can see both the profiles are separate profile this is separate profile this is separate profile so that's why it's it's number here is two selected as you can see now we can just extrude it up to 16 millimeters so i will just press 16 on my keyboard and again make sure that the operation is joined also if you want to make it a little bit higher also i can go it like maybe 18 millimeter and will press ok so here you can see we had just created a new shape something like this right and now if i want to uh, make it again chamfer so we'll go into the modify panel we'll activate the chamfer tool will select this is here you can see this is the is and same on the other side this is uh, that i want to chamfer at this moment and then two distance chamfer so in this direction i want to chamfer so let's let's chamfer it like this by selecting the edges 
and then dragging your arrows like this here you can see I will try to drag the arrow so we'll change that to two distance then I will drag this arrow maybe up to 10.5 yes and towards bottom direction we'll try to estimate the dimensions like maybe 17.9 or 18 I think yes 18 and it's looking great here you can see on both the direction it's looking great and I will just press ok to accept the result since we are done with the sketching part as you can see these are sketches over here I just don't want to be visible now so since uh, we are done with this extra support feature that wedge shape so I can just turn it off from over here so here you can see this is our final result we had just created now the only thing that left is these holes on this face and on to the bottom face the slot holes and we are also going to apply some fillet on these corners to, so now let's first do the fillets on all the four corners I don't want these corners to be very sharp so for that what I will do I will go on to the modify panel again and will activate this fillet tool here you can see just activate the tool then select all the corners one by one you just have to keep selecting by orbiting and selecting here you can see and I'm just selecting all the corners and to orbit my object you can use the orbit tool from over here and then specify the the fillet distance in this case I just want to keep it a fillet of one millimeter or maybe two millimeter here you can see the two is good now let's make it 2.4 2.4 for this one as well and we'll press ok here you can see now they are looking very nice since I just removed all the sharp corners on all the four edges now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply fillets on all the edges as well I don't want these edges to be this much sharp so for that I will act, act, again activate my fillet tool and I will keep adding all the edges sharp edges onto our body so here you can see these are all the edges where I want to apply fillets as well maybe a small amount of fillet but I just want to remove any stress concentration into my body so if, if there is so many sharp edges it will add stress concentration on my body and that will weaken our part so I don't want to do that so you can see I had selected all the edges and now I will apply a fillet of maybe one millimeter and now it is looking very good as you can see and I will just press ok to set the result so here you can see this is what we had created so far so the, now the two things only left the one feature is hole on this face the, and the other feature is slot on this base base uh, area here you can see so now let's move on to that and start doing so now on to this face that you can see right now on your screen we are going to create holes mounting holes for the NEMA 17 stepper motor and a big big hole at the center for the shaft that we are going to create and again guys uh, to get the whole description just refer to the PDF that you will be able to find into the course description so let's do, start making that hole so for that what I will do I will activate my creator sketch tool again and we'll select this face as a sketch face sketch plane so here you can see we had just the, again at the moment I had selected that all my sketch tools just got activated so instead of creating anything I will just go onto the create panel and I will activate this point tool so we are going to just define the position of our holes onto that particular face using the point tool so we'll activate the point tool We'll create a point like this four points for four holes for the mountings and one center point for the circular hole for the shaft and at this moment I will just press escape and the first thing I will do I will define the position of the point so from this point to this point the dimension I will define is 31 millimeter and on the other side will define the same 31 millimeter also as you can see these holes and these points are not horizontally constrained so we'll activate the horizontal constraint we'll select this point and this point so both will become horizontal here you can see we'll do the same we'll activate this one this point and this point on vertical and this this point and this point again horizontal and again this point and this point vertical here you can see now what I will do I will make a line from this point to this point like this and we'll make sure that this point is on the center of the this line so I just had to drag this point and you will be automatically seeing the snap point of the midpoint here you can see I will leave it over there then we'll select this line 
and we'll change that to construction line from this option over here there you can see as you can see we had already created all these five points on to this face now our next task is to center this all five points on this face so for that what we are going to do is first we'll go into the inspect panel and we'll activate this measure tool and now we're going to measure the distance between this edge and this edge so here you can see the moment i had selected both the edges it is giving me a distance of 43.2 right so what i will do now i will activate my dimension tool then we'll dimension from this edge to the center point and we'll make sure that it is 43.2 divided by 2 i just want to make it half so it will be centered on this face and i will press enter so here you can see it is 21.60 from this edge and then again 26 uh, 21.60 from this edge so this way it is centered on horizontal orientation the same will do for the vertical orientation again i will activate this this, this thing and this time I will select this top face and this bottom face and here it is giving me the exact vertical distance that is 43.60 so this way you can use the mirror this measure tool to measure your correct distance between the faces between the edges or between the points so I will just close this one since it is 43.60 so I will activate my dimension tool will dimension from this edge to the center uh, it's 43.60 divided by 2 so it will be on the center so this way here you can see i had completely constrained this sketch if you will just expand the sketch folder i can see a sketch 4 is completely constrained this means that i had provided all the dimension to define this complete five points now what i can do i can just click on the finish sketch at this moment so as you can see uh, this is the model that we had just created and on this face this is the sketch that we had created now the next task will go on to the create panel also we can activate our whole tool from over here but we'll go on to the create panel we'll activate the whole tool here you can see i just activated the whole tool now since i'm going to create multiple holes so i will activate this option multiple holes then i will select the sketch i mean the sketch points all the four sketch points here you can see i'm just selecting all the four sketch points and since the size is not correct so we'll correct now uh, before that i will make sure that my hole type is this one this simple hole then the height i will make sure that height we can keep uh, anything uh, greater than our thickness so let's keep it three millimeter i think three will be enough to make a through hole and then the diameter so the diameter guys since this is these holes for the m3 screws since on the stepper motor we will going to use m3 screw to mount the uh, mount our stepper motor onto this mounting so what we can do we can take a 0.2 mm clearance on uh, on the hole then the total diameter will be around 3.4 millimeter here you can see and the moment i had uh, just provided 3.4 over here here you can see the preview it's the whole sizes just got updated and since i'm happy with the result i will just press ok to accept the result here you can see so these four holes that we had just created for the mountings of stepper motor here you can see now we are going to create the center hole for our shaft but as you can see the moment i had just finished my hole my sketch has turned off so it's in by default it's in the process of fusion 360 so whenever you are done with the any of your modeling solid modeling tool automatically your sketch will get turned off so what you can do is you can just come back get into your design browser and expand your sketch folder and turn on your write a sketch here you can see now I, I will again activate my whole tool from over here then we'll select this time I'm going to create uh, again this activate this option then we'll select this center point and so this hole we want to keep 24 millimeters since this is for the shaft of our NEMA 17 stepper motor so I will just change the diameter to 24 over here here you can see and here we are getting a preview so it's correct I will just press ok to set the result and here you can see this is what we got and this time since we had used this sketch again to create this feature so it is not turned off by default again so what we will do is to make this model look more clear we'll just turn off this sketch from over here and we'll unexpand this folder also so the things will look more clear and better so here you can see this is what we had created so far so to create mounting holes onto this face we'll again use the same process that we had used earlier we'll activate our sketch tool then we'll select this top face, this sketch face, sketch plane and we'll click on that 
and here you can see the plane is just got activated to create a sketch so what we're going to do is then we'll go on to the create panel onto the sketch workspace here you can see and inside the sketch workspace we'll activate our center to center slot and we'll create a slots like this here you can see I will just select two points then we'll drag outside and I'm randomly creating slots uh, I'm not defining the size yet here you can see I'm just making sure that I am done creating the slots so here you can see we had just created a slot sketch onto that face four slots and now I, what I will do I will just define the diameter of one of the slots so the diameter is uh, four millimeter oh no sorry not two millimeter radius is 2 millimeter so the diameter is 4 millimeter now I will activate my equal constraint and will make sure that all the diameters for the slots are equal so I'm applying the constraint with the uh, this 2 millimeter radius so here you can see that radius for all the slots became equal now I will define the distance this uh, this distance of this uh, particular slot so this distance is 5 so I will just press 5 and here you can see uh, so the total length for this particular thing will be 9 millimeters. so I think it's wrong so we'll make it to 3 so here you can see now it is completely right now what I will do again I will activate my equal constraint will apply this equal constraint on all the this distance I, I mean the height of the slot so this way uh, everything will be connected to this dimension so whenever I will update this dimension here you can see all the slots are updating so this way we can come have full control onto our design so you can see we had created the slots but the position of the slots are not correct so for that what I will do I will make sure that the this point and this point on the same horizontal direction so we'll apply the constraint here you can see so to bring objects onto the same horizontal label what you can do just select the point by pressing shift on your keyboard and here you can see both the points are selected by pressing shift on the keyboard I had selected both the points then we'll apply the horizontal constraint and this way all two became on same horizontal position same will apply for the vertical position I want these these two slots in the same vertical orientation so for that I will press shift and will select both the points and then we'll apply the constraint here you can see we'll select both the points then we'll apply the constraint here you can see now I will make sure that these slots are uh, symmetrically oriented so for that first I will activate my measure tool will measure the distance from this edge to this edge and here you can see it's 69 so what I'm going to do will activate the dimension tool and will dimension from this edge to the center of the slot I want to keep this one as 4.5 millimeter and the same will do on the other side 4.5 millimeter like this here you can see since it's now it is vertically now we need to constrain this all four slots on the horizontal direction so for that what I will do I will activate my dimension tool and first I will define the distance between this point to this point so this one I just want to keep 17 millimeters so here you can see now we are going to define these slots on the horizontal direction so for that I will activate the my dimension tool again and from here to here this will be 8.5 millimeters so here you can see this is completely constrained now if I will expand my sketch folder you can see this small red lock icon this means my sketch is completely defined now you can just click on this finish sketch and here you can see this is the sketch we are getting all the four slots sketch created on the face now to make a hole what I will do is I will this time I'm not going to use hole tool I will simply activate my extrude tool and will select all the four profiles I just need to click inside the profiles to select the profiles here you can see I am just orbiting it and again selecting the profiles so I had selected all the four profiles then I will drag this cursor towards downward to make a hole and here instead of giving a dimensions what I can do I can just select all over here so what it will do it will make sure that it is truly cutting the object and then in the operation I will make sure that it's cut over here and will press ok so here you can see we had created the mounting holes for our bracket as well so this is our final design that we had created and now our design is completely finished so if you are confused or if you have if you are missing any information about the design dimensions and, uh, and the other stuff you can refer to the PDF attached to this course it's a technical PDF where it's a technical drawing where you will be able to find all the details and dimensions about this bracket so as you can see we had just finished our bracket and now what I'm going to do is I will just click on the save again and will make sure that all my files got saved so here you can see guys this is my design history or the design timeline on the bottom and all the time if you want to make any 
changes to any features for example let's say i want to change this fillet size so i will just make a right click on this fillet and will click on the edit feature and this way i can change the fillets for example if i want to make it 1.2 i can make it 1.2 and here you can see the moment i had clicked it all the fillet sizes just got updated in the similar manner if i want to change the size of this hole i can just select the that particular feature and you just had to hover over to your feature and it will highlight the feature onto your body so you don't have to remember like uh, which feature is for uh, what object so just hover over to the feature and make a right click click on edit feature and then if you want to update this whole of the size uh, size of the whole sorry so you can just make it like this like 3.6 and press ok so this way you can update your things inside fusion 360 very quickly since uh, all the time you will be able to find this uh, history over here on the timeline so that's why the timeline is really very important and at any point of time of your modeling process if you are finding that this timeline is not available onto the design what you can do is just go onto the top level of your tree and make a right click and here you can see it says do not capture design history so since it's already turned on right now it is that's why it is asking me to turn off this feature so if, if it is not turned on from here you can just turn it on so this way you can do the modeling solid modeling stuffs inside autodesk fusion 360 there are lots of features and tools uh, over here that we still need to explore but it's not possible to cover everything into this mini course so still uh, if you want to learn this course uh, just keep be updated on with my uh, website course website i will be posting lots of similar courses like this so let's move on to our next step thank you